Today I'd like to talk about Exeter going forward through the rest of 2009 and into, and into 2010. This presentation um, is right ahead of an investor trip that's going down there. We call it an investor trip, but it, it's, it's an investor, it's an analyst annual trip down to our properties where we take the professionals down to review what Exeter is doing in the field. So this is a bit of a heads up on what is currently happening. There's some new materials in this that um, have not been shown before, which I think you'll find quite informative. So we'll, we'll kick this off. The share structure as of November the 7th is relatively unchanged from where we've been previously. I think what I'd like to draw your attention to is the fact that um, when you look at the fully diluted position of uh, share positions of Exeter, that there's a quite a strong control position between a number of major institutions and management and insiders of Exeter. That's really important to Exeter going forward. Um, and I'll get to that later on, just why, why it's important that we continue to have the support of our retail shareholders and our institutional shareholders. You know, Exeter has come a long way since we put the company together in 2003. Uh, we have a strong board of directors, and, and most of you who follow the company for some years would be familiar with, with our board. We have a diversity of skills uh, relating to the technical, being myself, Yale Simpson, and Bryce Roxborough, our CEO, but Louis Montpellier on the legal side, Roger Walsh on the corporate side, Roger is well known, uh, Rob Reynolds, he's a chairman of a public company in Australia called Avoca Minerals, and Douglas Skeving. But really, when you look at the management team, you'll see, see, I, th I think probably the best way to describe it is look at the right-hand column and just see the experience of our team. Uh, from an exploration point of view, um, exploration is headed up by Matt Williams, Justin and Glenn and Fernando with considerable experience, but look at the development side. Whereas if you'd looked at Exeter two years ago, on the development side of Exeter, you really would have seen one name, Jerry Perkins. And you'll see the two metallurgists, the engineers, as we move Exeter from just being known as an early stage explorer into the development side. On the corporate side, we're headed up by Cecil Bond, who's our CFO. And you see Rob Gray, who many of you know, who handles investor communications for us. The interesting, here, here's kind of a summary, and I, I think I'll, 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 I'll move back and forth into the value side of Exeter and actually what's happening technically. But with Exeter's resources in the ground, um, you indirectly own 0.35 of an ounce of gold for each share that, that you would own. Now that's indirectly something because we're not, doesn't, we don't have the bullion on surface, this is the gold resources in the ground. But that is, in many respects, the basis of valuing Exeter. Certainly a number of analysts look at Exeter on the basis of how much gold they have per share and what value can be put against that. Now we know gold is, is in the range of $1,050 to $1,100 an ounce. So you can see that, that fundamentally there is value in Exeter. And what you see on this graph is a whole number of junior companies uh, some of them in production, some of them the names well known. You can see D2O Gold in there, you can see a number of them, uh, where you can see how much gold Exeter has relative to its peer group. Moving forward, we're going to talk about Caspiche. Um, really, for many new investors, they know Exeter really for Caspiche. It's in Chile, you can see it on the slide there that's being shown. It's up in, in, in the uh, Maracunga district of Chile. Uh, the red dots on this, uh, this image are, are the many projects that Exeter has. Um, we're only talking, or I'm only talking here about Caspiche and Cerro Moro because they are ranked, they are ranked numbers one and two respectively. So the other projects, in due course, we have, we, actually we have referred to them in the past, some of them we'll refer to in the future, but right now it's Caspiche and Cerro Moro. So we'll look at the next slide here. Here's really, this is a statement I'm very happy to make. Basically saying that the Caspiche discovery, discovery really is one of the world-class discoveries made by the industry in some years. Now, there's one benefit to having gray hair. Um, I can say that. I've been in the industry and working on gold since 1975. And I do know that this is, in fact, a, a very adequate statement. Finding it in Chile was, was really 
the, the cream on the cake, if you like, or the icing on the cake. Because Chile is ranked really internationally as one of the top jurisdictions for mining investment. So going on, we're now, now we're looking at uh, the slide where we, we, we say this is a Google image. Um, you can pick this up on your own computer by going into this area. You're looking east here, and, and what you're seeing in the image here on the, uh, in the center, you can see Caspiche discovering. You can see on the left-hand side uh, the Maracunga mine. It's in production. It's being operated by Kinross Mining. It's uh, approximately 200,000 ounces of gold a year. I understand that they are going into or looking at an expansion of that project to double the size of it. And on the right-hand side, which is actually south of Caspiche, you see the Cerro Casale discovery, or project, because the discovery was made a number of years ago, owned by Barrick and Kinross. Um, that's a big resource. Um, I think the, uh, the final feasibility study, I saw something in the press this week talking about the final feasibility study for the development of that project is in the hands of Barrick and Kinross and is going to be available to the public, I think, in Q1 2010. So you can see our discovery right between two major deposits in the Maracunga district. The next slide is a new one uh, that we haven't shown before. This is now looking from an aircraft, and you are looking north. So you can see Cerro Casale in the foreground. This is the big deposit um, that's owned by Barrick and Kinross. And the 21 million ounces referred to here is relating more to the mining reserve as against the total resource. But you can see Cerro Casale sitting on a mountain there. You can see the roads, the drilling roads for it. And you can see behind it, Caspiche, the reference to Caspiche being just behind the ridge that you see with some snow on it. And in the district, again, further along, you can see the Maracunga mine owned by Kinross Gold. And to the right on that mountain at the top right-hand side, you can see another project called Vulcan, owned by a company called Andina. Now, there are other deposits in the region. That just gives you a sense of what the layout of the land is. If we go to the next slide here, now we're looking on the ground uh, from one of the ridges looking at where Exeter is drilling. We have an area on the right called Caspiche Epithermals, uh, which is a gold target that Exeter drilled. Um, it was also drilled by previous operators on the project. There is gold there, but not consistent enough for us to look at a mining scenario, at least at this stage. You can see Caspiche Porphyry in the background. And all there is is a mark to an area that's very low topography because the deposit does not stick out as a mountain. Um, Santa Cecilia in the background is, a, is an epithermal system um, which doesn't have gold certainly in the top several hundred meters and that's not um, ground controlled by Exeter. So you can see what it looks like when you look on the ground. And again, when you're really stand, lo looking at the drills in the distance, you'll see two labels there. Uh, one is drill hole 16A and, and the other one's 36A. Both of these you can see drills in the distance. And you can see, although you're up here at an elevation of 4,200 meters, it is not particularly rugged when you are up there. And you can see the Caspiche area that we've been drilling is topographically low. 